let's process some milkweed. So uh, if you grab them early enough, I've got two different things of milkweed here, uh, both common, but from some are from my plants, some are from my in-laws plants. Um, now that you can see these have all kind of started to open. Um, I think these are probably two different varieties. They're both common milkweed. Uh, but if you can get that whole thing to come out as one thing, you can see a lot of those seeds are already starting to fall off there. There we go. And you can just scrape them off that, okay? So that's easy. That is the easiest way to do this, okay? Because as you can see, this fluff right there, it's very pretty and silk-like, um, but and the little things just detach right from it. And then you're pretty well clear. But, okay, say that didn't work, um, like these ones. These pods here from my mother-in-law are smaller than my pods. They're both common milkweed, um, but her pods were a little smaller. I'm not sure why, seeds are a little smaller. Um, but you can see they're already really, really open. And all this cottony fluff here, just all over the place, all right? So if you've got this problem, cause like no matter how hard I try here, if I try to get these out like this, I can get some, and like this one worked out pretty good, but there's still just a ton of fluff that I can't quite, can't quite handle, okay? And there's also just a lot of loose seeds in this bag from where the fluff moved around, okay? So another solution when your milkweed is acting all funky like this and just really wants to spread, because the purpose of these is that those seeds, they catch the slightest breeze and then they just real slow waft off to wherever and then they snap off of that floaty piece whenever they get where they're going, okay? The slightest amount of disturbance. It was very gentle. Okay, so say, <sighs> Sorry, these are really a mess if you don't. <laughs> don't do this in your house. I'm out in my shop. Um, if I got this much fluff all over, um, that would be just a nightmare to clean up. It'd be like you shear to sheep in your house. Um, so another way to do this, okay, is to take and either put, I'm trying to separate a single seed here. I suppose that shouldn't matter. Um, and put them in a hard contain container like this, okay? Or a paper bag. Man, my tea is going to be so full of this stuff. Uh, I'll put them in a paper bag like this, okay? And that's what we're going to do real quick. We're going to do the hard container real fast. And in either of those, we'll drop a coin or I've got a washer in this case right now okay but we're gonna drop that in there we're gonna go ahead and throw some more in there and I will of course see if I can't get them to come out but I did not have much luck beforehand yeah they're really just kind of pulling out fluff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get as much of those in there as possible and not all over the shop and we're just gonna pack this thing with a bunch of these loose ones, okay? And unless I see a seed, I'm not really worried about the fluff. Now this one, we may be able to get to separate. Oh, I lost my grip, because I was trying to shift. So maybe we can pull, no? See, then that's just, these ones aren't really detaching as easily, and so I'm just shredding. Okay. We have our coin, or in this case, a washer, in there. You can start to see how here now most of what is visible does not have seeds on it. Seeds are starting to fall off and land on the bottom of the container. Then all we need to do is pull out the fluff 
that is mostly seedless. There's still a few seeds, so we could pick out the individual seeds if we want. For me, I'm just going to be spreading all this fluff in my yard. So any seeds I miss, not a big deal. They'll just overwinter. Okay, I couldn't find another washer that was of a large enough size. I just have a bunch of smaller ones. This is just a T-net uh, for a rock climbing wall. So we're gonna throw a bunch in this bag here. There's already a little bit in there, but You know what would be really great is if you had something like a rock tumbler. That would be fantastic. I do not have a rock tumbler. Wish I had a rock tumbler. Be a fun thing to add to the shop for random projects. Try to get any of these that got missed that still have seeds. Fluff. It is all over. Like, I don't think you guys can really see how much fluff is all over, but there's so much fluff all over. And I have still a gallon bag and some of a Walmart sack over there. Okay, we got the bag partly filled. I'm gonna drop our heavy thing in, or coin or whatever you wanna use, and close the bag back up. Fold the bag over some. Support the bag so you don't just like launch your thing through the bag. I should have done quite a bit. Now what we do is we go over to our handy dandy workbench and we grab a pair of scissors and we cut a little hole in the bottom. Okay. Now all those seeds will fall out that hole in the bottom. So then there we go. Have all the seeds that are separated off. Keep using the same bag, just pinch and hold that hole while you're working and shaking to do the rest of them. All right, I'm gonna go back to processing these. Maybe do that outside. Pretty effective though. Well, that's quite a bit. I'll shake that at the barrel one more time. Uh, see what I can get out of it. But uh, as is, that is a ton of common milkweed seed. All right, so here's what we wound up with. Bucket of fluff that still has some seeds, but as you can tell, not very many seeds, just the occasional seed here, there, and there. Um, ugh. And I have breathed in so much of this. I, it's raining, otherwise I'd have the door open. So, um, 
I die from this later asphyxiate. It's my fault for not owning a respirator. That'll be the next thing I buy because of the amount of sanding I do in the shop because I do most of my shop work when it's raining. But, um, so, cleaned out all these pods. These are all the pods I gathered between my house and my mother-in-law's. Uh, so, that was 113, okay? 113 pods. Yeah, that's quite a few. Um, really from a small area, like, we have a, her area that was growing these was probably four by six and ours is maybe four by four. Um, we got all of these seeds, my hand on it. So you can maybe see that goes up to about the 250 mil line in there. Um, that's a lot of seeds. So that was 200, well, I counted out batches of 40, okay? Which was, um, what was that? That was a quarter, quarter teaspoon, got me around 40 seeds each time. It was either 35 or 50, um, so kind of, we're going to call it 40 to land on the low end, because um, everybody's always happier when they get more seeds than less seeds, right? Because what I'll do is I will either sell or start all of these seeds. I'll have these listed on the website within the week, um, within our, on our farm website, under, it'll be under the trees section. Um, in the wildlife area, but they're obviously not a tree. So, um, of those 40, you know, roughly call it 40, uh, scoops, 40 seeds per scoop, which we'll just call a packet. We got 204 of those. That is a lot of seeds. Um, so that's exciting. I can't like, I didn't do the math in my head yet, um, or on my calculator, but that's an insane number of milkweed seeds. So definitely worth the couple hours to really get this all cleaned out. Um, I switched over, as you guys kind of saw there in the time-lapse. Uh, it was insane to try to do that many pods in the little container or in the um, paper bag. So I just put them all in a bucket, just emptied them all in the bucket and then put some uh, three big blocks of wood in there and put a lid on it, shook the heck out of it pulled the fluff off into another bucket and then dumped those seeds out and did it again to get any remaining, which we got the vast majority of it on the first go. Like there was, um, I want to say maybe five or 10 scoops worth that we got out of the second one. So we definitely got the vast majority of them out in that first go of like maybe six, seven minutes of sitting there shaking the bucket around. So really that wasn't a ton of work once you got it figured out. And one, like once I decided to go this route for a bulk method, Honestly, if someone built like a machine, it was like, I mean like, and not even like a crazy fabrication machine, just like took a five gallon bucket or a uh, piece of PVC, like a four inch piece of PVC pipe or even six inch and just cut some holes in it, staggered with a saw and then uh, put it on a spindle and put some rocks in there with it. You could pack that bad boy full and get it running with a low belt and all the fluff would stay in there and the seeds would fall out through those holes um, and that would probably be the most efficient where you could just pack that in there. But really the bucket worked fine. Um, it would have been a heck of a lot better if I was somewhere where I wasn't just breathing this all in because I don't know how easy it is to see in the camera, but there is so much fluff in the air still. Um, but yeah, that's pretty exciting. So obviously the benefit of these is going to be for, uh, pollinators, but the big, big benefit, uh, for doing any milkweeds is going to be, they're the only host plant for monarch caterpillars. Now, all milkweeds, okay, not just um, not just the common milkweed or if this is the showy milkweed, whichever. Um, I've also got some pods somewhere. I think I just threw them in here. Yeah, I threw them in with the um, cone flowers I still needed to do of uh, the swamp milkweed. Their, cone, their pods hadn't opened yet, so I'm not worried about mixing. <laughs> but, you know, if you buy some cone flower seeds from us and you get one or two butterfly milkweeds, then hey, it's a bonus. Um, <clears throat> that's obviously not the goal. And if you didn't want them, then just pull them up. But um, I don't have enough to sell those. I got like three pods. <sighs> so I am going to, I'm sorry, there's just so much fluff. And with the light, I can see it all now. Um, <clears throat> so we won't be selling the butterfly milkweed this year. Ours at our place didn't do real hot. I only got one pod from it. And then uh, my mother-in-law's didn't do real hot. It only had three little pots, which are what I've got in that bag. Um, so I'll scatter them in the front yard. 
And speaking of which, that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of this bucket of fluff, um, with all the little seeds that are still attached. It's pouring rain, thank, thank goodness we've needed it. Um, <clears throat> but when it's done raining, I will go out and just fling up all of that fluff in the front yard and scatter those seeds all around our, our, our yard. It's not a yard, we don't ever mow it, we don't do anything. Once in a blue moon we graze it, but it's so rare that we graze it. Um, at this point, it's just for wildlife. So every year when I have, when I do this kind of stuff and I have, and for the last two, three years, not, you know, it's not like we've been doing this for 10 years in the front yard. We used to, st when we had sheep, we steadily grazed the front yard. Um, but now that it's just the IPPs, um, it's just a pain in the butt. Like when a sheep got on your porch, it was kind of annoying and it was just like, ah, whatever. But, um, or when they were right up next to the glass uh, doors here for the um, shop. But when a pig does it, it's mild and, the sheep didn't really scratch on our car. The pigs will scratch on our cars and I, I don't want to do that with our cars. So we don't really graze in the front yard very often. And if I do, I like have to pull out some panels and stuff and section off the things I don't want the pigs to have access to. So we just don't really graze it that often. And I go through and every time we do seeds of anything, um, any, any wildlife beneficial plant at all, all the seeds that don't make it, like when we uh, blend fruited seeds to get them, so like berries and stuff, um, any seeds that float, which should be non-viable, but sometimes they just have a really, really low germination rate. Sometimes the floaters actually do germinate. But so I take all of that and I just scatter it out in the front yard. And if it comes up, fantastic. If it doesn't, it's no loss to me and it's no loss to somebody who might buy seeds from us. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna pop over. I had already filmed end credits. So let's, let's pop to that. So I hope that helps. Um, the trick to these seeds, okay, is that you either need to plant them in the fall here so that way they can have at least 30 days of cold, moist stratification. Um, or what you can do if you want to start them in pots um, or you just want to wait and plant them out in the spring is you need to give them that cold, moist stratification artificially. So you can put them in a bag of uh, damp, not soaking wet, but damp peat moss or a damp paper towel in a Ziploc baggie that is slightly opened or has a couple holes punched in it so they can still breathe um, and put it in your fridge. Not your freezer, your fridge. Um, Cause your fridge will, cause you think about outside for the most part, the temperature's going up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and they're a little bit insulated at, on the ground where they're at out there. Put them in the freezer. Sometimes you'll lose, you'll reduce the viability of the seeds. Not by a ton, but enough that it'd be annoying if you're trying to start them in plant pots. So put them in your fridge, minimum 30 days preferably 60 to 90, and then you can plant them in your pots and go ahead and get a head start on the spring. So there we go. Um, I will be doing one of these for at least a few of the species that we've got up there once I get the milkweed done. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching our channel. Thank you for our Patreon supporters, uh, Ashley and Raymond Hunter. And uh, yeah, y'all have a great week. Um, and if you have more interested, more interest in propagations, then uh, check out that video there or that video right there. Thank you guys. Have a great week.